The Amar Empire, a theocratic monarchy, is the largest in all of New Eden, spanning 40% of the inhabited solar systems. It is most known for its religion and use of slave labor. Even to this day, Amar is a ritualist authoritarian imperial state where the Amar Emperor holds almost full power. Under him are his five heirs, the leaders of the five royal families. They are the Shapur family, the Kador family, the Sarum family, the Kurazor family, and the Tashmurkon family. From these five royal families, a new emperor is usually chosen. The Ardishapur family believe that scripture comes before everything. They maintain rigid separation in the name of faith, and their territories are described as uncomfortable for foreigners. They are however devoted to making their slaves better servants of God, and they spend great effort on the educational and spiritual growth of slaves and commoners. This highly religious family prefer to maintain only limited interaction with the outside. This also extends to their economic policies, which has caused them to be the poorest territories in Amar space. The Kador family, on the other hand, employs tight, centralized regulation on areas such as construction. The leaders of this family are seen to be latching onto the coattails of powerful leaders. The Kador are described as being very socially conservative, with great importance placed on true Amar tradition and nobility over all else. Most trade is restricted to certain established lineages, leaving them as a very poor part of the Amar territories. The Sarum family favor a strong, united Amar that will crush its enemies. They are belligerent against any central authority that they do not care for. This went as far as attacking Dorian II's fleets during his coronation. The Sarum is completely efficient in its slave education, and the Sarum-dominated military offers many opportunities for slaves and commoners, unlike the other families. The Sarum are by far the most warmongering house. They believe wholeheartedly that the destiny of the Amar is to rule over all creation. Their trade policies used to be the same as the Kador and Ardishapur families, but more recently they have implemented several more liberal policies, making their economic power grow exponentially since. The Kurazor family are a more secretive and corrupt house. They have established many secret religious councils. This has caused other houses' respect for them to diminish over the years. The Kurazor treat other nations as equal international partners. Dorian II was known for his permissive treatment of slaves. Due to this belief, they are the only house to have a Kaldari holder. The Kurazor are diplomats of the Amar and regularly try to foster improved relations with outsiders. Due to this, their territories are by far one of the most prosperous and well-off of all the houses. The Tashmurkon family promotes freedom to do as one will and as one can. They have a very liberal interpretation of scripture laws, so much so that they vocally oppose true Amar-centric policies and beliefs, even in the face of emperors and other heirs. Anyone with the will and the dedication can become an heir, and anyone without can become a slave. They are the only house with acknowledged Eudorian ancestry, and one of the only houses to have named a Minmatar holder. Their open trade policies with other empires are by far the most flexible, Katish Tashmurkon being the richest person in New Eden. They still have to uphold many imperial regulations that restrict what can be traded, but they undermine these wherever possible. More recently, a sixth family has been brought back into the fold, the Karnid family, who were expelled after a rebellion led by Karnid II. After a war with the empire and the assassination of his own brother by his own hand, while not actively an heir to the empire, he is part of the Empress Jamil's privy council and the Karnid region still remains separate as the Karnid kingdom. The Karnid family cares little for religious or other restrictions on trade, and it deals with both other empires and illegal organizations. The emperor and his heirs can expect to live for at least 500 years. The use of cybernetic implants keep their bodies alive, even after they start to fail. A deeply religious people, religion is still the most important part of Amar culture. It is the main excuse given for the largest atrocities in known space, and also the greatest feats. The Amar have a tradition, the doctrine of sacred flesh, which stops them from cloning. Not that this has stopped some lesser known and more widely known individuals from doing it. After the closure of the Eve Gate, a large natural wormhole that brought humanity to New Eden, the Amar were the first of the races in New Eden to rediscover warp interstellar travel, including that of the Jump Gates. They accomplished this more than 2,000 years ago. Once they did, they started to expand their influence and grow more powerful at the expense of others, enslaving entire nations, also known as the Reclaiming, including the Minmatar, justified by their religion. In thousands of years, the Amar have enslaved every race and nation they have come across. Slavery is still a major part of Amar society, so much so that it is said that they could never be without it. This has obviously upset the individualistic Galente and hampers many treaties and will for a long time to come. In recent years, the Amar have only just begun to run into races as powerful as themselves. While smaller than the Amar Empire, the Galente Federation had just as much economic and military might as that of the Amar. Not too long after, the Jove humiliated the Amar Empire in an attempt at putting the Jovians into slavery. 
the Jove managed to obtain the Empire's battle plans, and with the Jovians having far superior technology, they were defeated in the first and only major conflict. The Empire was not finished with the Jove, and tried to attack once more in order to add them to their slave stocks, with a much larger, much better prepared fleet. However, this is when the next major blow came to the Amar Empire, the Min Matar Rebellion. This rebellion came at a very bad time for the Empire, as it was facing the war with the Jovians. The Min Matar successfully ejected their Amar masters. This caused the Amar to hastily make peace with the Jove, to bring back their forces to help battle the Min Matar rebels. In the years since, the Amar Empire has learned restraint and hastily slowed down their expansion and are now less forceful in their meetings of other races. The Amar still have no idea how it is that the Min Matar became so strong and how they acquired such a large fleet. They however still see themselves as the most powerful race in New Eden, with the support of their holy god. There are many stories of triumphant battles, major defeats, resurrections, betrayal and suicide, but these are stories for another time. The rest of the Amar story is up to us and how we the Amar shape the universe.